Well, hello, my name is Martin Turner and I'm the author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2016. And uh, throughout 2017, we're doing a series of week by week uh, videos about uh, real world use of Cork Express. Uh, and today, we're going to be talking about choosing fonts and kerning. Let's go to the screen and uh, I offer you uh, three Fs uh, and these are Helvetica, Futura uh, and Bodoni. And these show you uh, just three examples of how fonts differ. So on the left here, um, if you can see my hands, uh, we've got Helvetica and that is, you know, some people think that in an ideal world, everything will be set in Helvetica. Other people think that that would actually be Helvetica. But the proportions are crisp. They've got a, a slight flaring at the end there. Uh, they are very neutral proportions, and the F -like is like that. With more character, Futura, which is a geometric font, it's, it's an older font than, than Helvetica, although it looks more modern, uh, you've got a much higher F, you've got a lower bar, you've got the same kind of geometric shape. And then for complete contrast of that, we've got Bodoni. I've kerned these quite tightly together. And Bodoni is what they call a didone. Uh, a didone is simply a dido or a bodoni or something like that. And, and, and these are 19th century, mainly French and Italian fonts. So it's got these, these massive differences of stroke width. And those can be uh, hugely elegant but they can also be quite hard to read. Now, let us uh, look for a second more at some of the aspects of uh, letters. So again, here on the screen, you've got T height, which is not in fact the height of the T, but the height of the ascenders. You've got X height, which is the height of the uh, lowercase letters. You've got cap height, but actually X height and T height are the most important. You've got ornaments, which are, are like the little tail on that G there. You've got the M width, which is the width of M, which is the widest length. You've got the N width, which is the width of uh, an N, which is a standard sort of letter. There you'll see the S is actually narrower, and in most fonts it will be. All fonts differ. Capitals are usually much wider, which you can see here on the H. You've got the baseline. And uh, you've got the descenders, which drop below the baseline. And those proportions of X height, T height, and descenders are crucial to the look of the font. Now, again, you've got uh, differences of stroke width in this particular font. This font is a serif, uh, and those serifs are those little tags on the end. You've got, as I say, stroke variation. The counters are the white spaces inside. If the counters are too small, which they often are in bold or black fonts, then it becomes quite hard to read, even though it might make more impression. Uh, and also, you've got a slant to the O. That O is not vertical, it's actually slanted. Well, okay, um, let's look at some other, uh, I've got a whole collection of fonts for you here. And each of these rows are, are the same group of fonts. And you can see that even though these have the same point size, uh, there's a huge, huge variation, uh, not only in, in what letters look like, but also in that size. So uh, moving across, you see that is the X height, the height of the A. But within the A, you have smaller or larger counters, uh, you usually have the two-story A, the one-story A creates some visual, vi visual problems, but some people like them, some people think they're more legible. Um, that changes quite a lot from font to font. The Bs are a bit more consistent. You've got serifs, uh, that's a, a one kind of serif, that's a, a didone serif, uh, that's a slab serif, and then these are sans serif fonts, so they've got no serifs at all. The Cs are really quite varied in size and in shape. Uh, even down to this C, which is very narrow. That's actually Helvetic and narrow. The Ds, again, you've got variation in the height. The Es are all over the place. The Fs uh, are like a forest of trees. The Gs 
more variation in Gs than pretty much any other letter. You've got these two-story Gs with the, the two sets of counters and the one-story G which drops down, but even the, 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 width, the, the width is different, the height's different, uh, the H's are more consistent. Now, what is good typography? Well, uh, good typography, let's come over here, uh, and I've got my notes here, and good typography is, is legibility plus appropriateness plus consistency. So the first job of a typographer is to be legible. If they can't read it, you've lost. Um, there's a, a limit to the value of legibility. So if it's, if it's too legible, then it, it looks like you're trying to con them. The, the small print is what everyone believes is the truth. The large print is just the marketing, the spin. Then you've got appropriateness. Is it appropriate for the document I'm working on? Uh, and then you've got consistency. It's, it's got to feel the same right the way through. Well, legibility, a lot of research has been done about this. Uh, many people say that legibility is all about the point size uh, and uh, serifs are more legible than sans serifs. That's actually completely untrue. It's optical size uh, and then weight, leading, curling and tracking, and most of all, familiarity. So even German black letter script to people who are used to it is actually just as easy to read. And one reason why uh, people thought that serif fonts were easier to read was because they were more familiar. Now we see so much in sans serif as well, uh, it doesn't make much difference. But the optical size is really interesting because people often say, oh, well, everything's got to be set in 12 point. Uh, here is Frittiger at 10 point. I've blown it up on the screen. It wouldn't usually be that large. Uh, at 11 point, and Adobe Garamond, there are many Garamonds, at 12 point. And Frittiger at 10 point is the same optical size as Futura at 11 point, except in the capitals where Futura will seem bigger. And Garamond needs to be 12 point to appear the same size. Or uh, this is Frittiger uh, at 10 point, Futura at the same size, Adobe Garamond at the same size. So generally, most modern fonts have got a, a high X height. If they've got otherwise good legibility, then um, you can uh, set them at 9 to 11 point, and 12 point is going to seem over large, it's going to seem over clear. But fonts like Bodoni might need to be 14 point to be legible at all. And all those handwriting fonts, which you can get on the internet for nothing, uh, often have got to be set at 18 point. So the crucial thing is optical legibility, always printed out. Now, what else have we got? We've got weight. So um, let's just go to here and look at this Fritica font. I'm going to come to the bottom of the screen here in Quark Express uh, to the measurements panel, and you can see uh, that there. Uh, and we'll click on there. And we'll see we've got all these different weights of Frutiger. And uh, Frutiger uh, Ultra Black uh, looks like that. And uh, Frutiger Light looks like that. Usually the book fonts are the most legible. Um, generally speaking, fonts are most legible when the counters are, are strong. That's why book fonts have got these really, really good counters, so the space in the, in the G, the space in the E. And a slightly wider font is more legible, so ITC book is hugely wide, uh, and that takes up more space. If you're a shorter space, you might, want to not, not, might want, not want to use that, but it is more legible. And then the next thing uh, is leading. So let me just uh, create a bit of nonsense text here. I'm going to go to utilities uh, over here. I'm going to do insert placeholder text. And you get a load of that Latin stuff that everyone's seen before. And if I want to increase the legibility of that, um, so I'm going to put it on this, on this grey background here, which is less legible. So the contrast is also crucial. Uh, at some colours are just very, very illegible. Black on red is almost impossible to read. Uh, and if I now go to uh, the leading here at the bottom, if I increase that leading, oh, sorry, I'm not on leading at all, that's the wrong thing. Um, so leading is here at the bottom. Uh, just have a look at that. And if I increase that leading, the legibility actually improves. Um, so 
Okay, it's Latin, you can't actually read it. But um, if in trouble, decrease the font size, increase the leading. It uses up more space than the, than the basic leading. Leading is that, that distance between uh, the, uh, the two lines, so over here. This gap between the bottom of the descender and the top of the ascender is the leading. If you set a font type, so if you set 10 point font with 10 points between the bass lines, it will, that's called set type, and it, it's actually really quite hard to read. Um, but <coughs> if you increase that leading a little bit, you give yourself more room to breathe. Quark Express is defaulted at 20% extra leading, so that the gap between the, the bottom, top and, bottom and top uh, is going to be two points on a 10 point font, or the, the entire thing, because it's a bit inconsistent. And some people say leading is the gap. Some people say it's the total distance. Quark tends to use the total distance. Um, that's going to be 12 points on 10 point. Well, let's look at tracking. Tracking uh, uh, over here. We're going to find the tracking in, again, the measurements panel. Uh, and uh, it's down here. Uh, and you've got that A, little red V. At the moment, the tracking on that is 10 additional points. So the, the standard tracking for this particular font is that, this is an italic font, italic fonts are intrinsically more difficult to read because they're less familiar. Um, uh, the tracking zero. If you increase the tracking, then you actually increase legibility. So to increase the tracking, all I've got to do is, again, come down to the bottom here and just do that. Now, at a particular point, that stops improving legibility and just makes it worse. So use with care. But if in trouble, a bit more tracking might help you out. If you decrease the tracking, not as so much in an italic font, but certainly in a black font or a bold font, you increase the, the power of the font. So uh, over here, we've got tracking plus 20%, uh, plus 20, so what? Down here, that looks really imposing. And, and for a big title, decreasing the tracking can make it really stand out. Um, so we've talked about uh, size, we've talked about tracking, we've talked about leading, you've got increased leading, you've got tight leading, it can work in titles. Now let's talk about kerning. So um, if we take uh, a font like Helvetica or Futura or Gill, and you've got some examples here, uh, you see they've got, each, each got a different look on the page, and that's because partly because of the letters, but also because of the characteristic spacing. And uh, in most cases, the kerning is built in to the font, if it's a proper true type, true type or open type font. And what you'll see is that um, if we look at the, for example, A and Q, the gap there is very slightly less than it would be if it was uh, just the standard spacing. And that's because optically, uh, letters occupy different, different amounts of space. Now, for most things, that's all going to be fine. But occasionally, here's, the, um, here's all the letter pairs that, that usually get kerned in the font. And, and for each one of these, in most professional open type and true type fonts that you have and you pay for, these will be done automatically and you won't have to think about them. But occasionally, you get a letter combination uh, like CCG, which is an important acronym uh, in the health service in the United Kingdom, which in the particular font, which is Frutiger, uh, just looks wrong. So Frutiger is, is the house font of uh, the National Health Service. And if you see CCG in a load of text, it will look wrong. And in Quark Express, you can actually edit that. Now, I think I might already have edited that one. Let's have a look. So I'm going to go to Edit and I'm going to go uh, to kerning pairs. And this is going to be done per font. I don't just mean per font, but per weight of font as well. So um, I'm going to come down to uh, Frutiger. I'll go a few fonts on there. I use a font management program to keep off the all 10,000 fonts I've got. I'm going to go to Frutiger uh, LT Com 55 Roman. And uh, my Kerning pair is CC, so capital C, capital C. Uh, and 
what I can now do, if that looks wrong, is just move those and those will be saved uh, in the document. They're not saved in the font, they're just in the document. You would break your copyright if you were to change that. And again, the same thing with CG. In fact, I've already done CG, so uh, that's why that looked okay. If I, if I go back to the, the standard, uh, I get that. Uh, it doesn't look as good. So, and now, having done that, I'm going to add that pair, uh, and I'm going to go to CC, and add that pair. I'm going to get the OK, save, uh, and now my word CCG, which in the middle of some text, would just, it just sticks out, like the, the spacing's wrong, is now all sorted. If you've got a font that you've found on the internet which you love, but the kerning's wrong throughout the entire font, forget it, just throw it away. Because for you to kern all 516 most common pairs will take you basically the rest of your life. Uh, it costs more to kern a font than to, than to design it. But if you've got a font where just one odd letter pair uh, is off, and you don't usually see the capital CCG in English, then using uh, edit and kerning uh, can really sort things out for you. But you've got to do it per pair, per font. Well, that's all we've got time for today. Um, I hope you've uh, got some insights into uh, font size, uh, how fonts work, uh, kerning, legibility. It's really just the tip of the iceberg, and there are some great books uh, of which uh, the elements of typographic style is probably the very greatest, which can help you out. Typography is a long journey. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to uh, how we find a font to be appropriate, how we make that work for us. But for today, uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2016. You can get that from Amazon or your local bookshop. And we'll be doing uh, these tutorials right the way through 2017. I look forward to seeing you again.